You must know these things before traveling to Georgia, the country. Hey, it's Anna Sinani, and in this video, I'm going to answer all the questions I get frequently asked from everybody I speak to in regards to Tbilisi, Georgia. Like, where is Georgia? How far is it from me? Is it the state or is it a country? How much does it cost to smash the like button? And that's right, nothing. Smash it! How much does it cost to travel here, to live here? What are the tours like? Just generally, what are my expenses? And did you smash that like button yet? So this can be useful guys for you as a tourist visiting or someone looking to study here, retire here, start any entrepreneurial activities here, or if you'd like to do what I do and invest in real estate here while living frugally and receiving income from abroad. But seriously, if you haven't smashed the like button yet, please do so now as it signals YouTube to push my video to more users. And for those of you that are new, hit the subscribe button and the beautiful bell button to be notified on new videos I upload every week on Monday. This channel is completely free for you and it's all about investing in real estate and investing in yourself. If you feel like I haven't covered something or you'd like me to cover something, let me know in the comments below. Alrighty, let's begin. So first of all, you might be wondering, where is Georgia? Georgia is a small, special, beautiful, four season all year round country in Eastern Europe, strategically located in the crossings of Europe and Asia in between the Caucasus Mountains. Do I have all the e-commerce people like, what? Drop shipping? Shipping? <laughs> More famously known in history as the Silk Road, all right? That probably rang a bell. This is the Silk Road and Georgia just two decades ago was a communist country that collapsed and gave birth to the Georgia we know today, a free market economy, a democratic capitalist country and with massive potential since it's only 20 years old and it has a lot of room to grow. How far is Georgia from the world? Well, listen, I moved here from Dubai back in 2018 on an entrepreneurial adventure to discover this unique emerging market. It took four hours to fly here and it's in the same time zone, GMT plus four. And what I love about Georgia is that it takes three to four hours to go to most countries in Europe, which is amazing. It's like four hours everywhere. How, how does that make sense? What am I doing in Georgia? So I first came here for a week to check out the place after I heard a lot about its growth and potential. And I had a great time, of course, but I said one week wasn't enough. And did I really <laughs> search or was I just enjoying? <laughs> so I said, hey, that's not enough time to see whether I should live and invest here. So I came back on a more in-depth mission, inspection trip, quest, and stayed here for a month. And at the end of the month, I loved the property I found so much that I rented it for a year to carry on my research. And through my research, what got me to stay here is the real estate business, right? Buying, renovating, renting, and selling property. So I created a company called Sterling Property Advisors. I'll leave that in the link below in case you wanna surf into more details. We're not gonna cover that today. And we help other foreigners just do all kinds of things, all right? To list a few, we set up a business, we open bank accounts, we help purchase your property and we get you residency, we do renovation, and construction, and management, and the list goes on. All right, there are many motivated sellers around. The banks are great, they give you credit in dollars, so that's easy to work with. Compared to Turkey, they give you loans in Turkish lira with high interest of 18 to 20%. They don't give you in dollars, so I like it here. They give me in dollars. Are there any good opportunities there in Georgia? Well, that's a tricky question, right? You've got a bunch of people coming here saying, oh, there's no opportunities. And you've got a few coming here and saying, wow, look at the opportunities. It depends person to person. If you want a job or a passport, go to Australia, Canada, America, and so on, where the average wage is also above $2,000 to $4,000 per month, and you're guaranteed a passport after some years. That's where you want to climb the corporate ladder. In Georgia, the average wage starts around $300 to $350, and it's highly competitive. You've got these bunch of smart people here. So it's not a good place to get employed as a foreigner. It's a great place to study or start a business. All right, Georgia has a few of the best medical schools and unis. So there's a lot of foreigners studying here and it's growing and growing and growing. So I would advise you to start a job here or a corporate career here. What I do recommend is you start your business here, start business startups. Whether you'd like to dive into the tourism sector, import, export, tech, real estate, it doesn't matter. 
the cost of living, the ease of business, the competitive affordable labor costs, smart people graduating, they make it all possible for you to have a business here or even online. The amount of expats that come here to start or continue their online business here is amazing. It's growing. We've got digital nomads here coming plane after plane. You've also got high net worth individuals here who come here for the purpose of hitting the videos like button and paying less tax on their income in their country's taxes as high as like 20 to 40 percent. So they come here to get this status and pay only one percent tax. All right, I've had a few clients so far with this case and we've helped them purchase a property, get residency, apply for this status. And you need to have sixty thousand dollars in income to get this status. All right, or like around $800,000 in assets, properties. For the services, you can do most of this remotely as well. I've had people who purchase properties remotely. But anyway, more on that at a different time. Let's carry on with the q and I must say, if you already have income through your remote work or online business or investments outside Georgia, and you're receiving this income while living in Georgia, man, you will live like a king. Not only will you save so much money, you get to reinvest that money back into yourself, back into your business, back into your life, your investments, and heck, you can even move your headquarters here and employ people here and have your main base here for your online business or whatever it is you love doing. Generate income from outside and live here and operate here inside. How much does a vacation or inspection trip cost me? Look, well, a vacation doesn't cost much, right? It's kind of like a budget area. All the budget tourists come here. You can rent an Airbnb starting from $10 per night taxis cost literally one to three dollars go just about anywhere or everywhere around the city but if you grab a taxi from the street it's more expensive so download the bolt app it's like uber but just way better groceries for two weeks for two people it costs maybe $70. If you wanna eat out with friends, it can be as low as $5 per person or at a more fancy place, it can go up to $30 to $40 per person. And in both cases, this includes a bottle of wine, a couple starters, main courses, basically a little bit of everything in the menu. So it's quite affordable. If you're coming for an inspection trip, I advise you to stay two weeks up to a month so you can visit different places. I don't advise staying at a hotel. You can find hotels from $10 to $150 per night. But when it's a month, that little room can cost you like $300 to $4,500. When instead you can grab a place for one month with a short-term rental, two bedroom will cost you somewhat around like $500 to $600 per month. You can find cheaper too. And the most top, top place, like most expensive place, like a penthouse, huge, good view, can cost you like $1,000 to $2,000 per month. What kind of tours are here? How much does it cost? So once you arrive in the capital, Tbilisi, you're literally in the center. And the opportunities to discover this beautiful land are endless. There are plenty of touring opportunities going west and north and south and east. And you could go on a highly personalized group tour, fully customizable private tour. There are like many packages, okay? I won't list all the things you can do here. That's for you to discover, of course. I'm not a tour expert, but I'll drop a few things you could do. And most importantly, I'll name a few places you can visit. You could go to Batumi for the beach, Gudari for winter sports, you know, snowboarding, skiing, paragliding. You can even heli ski where you jump off a helicopter and go off road. All right, that's where I mainly go every winter, January to March. There are other ski resorts too. You could really go to many different small ski resorts around. You can go to Bakuriani, which is really beautiful more family orientated you're in a little city with the mountains all around you 360 so you're here and there's mountains here and you're seeing people ski down it's really cool you must also visit kazbegi kutaisi borjomi kacheti gori there's a bunch of things to do here guys you, you can go to great health centers historical spots wine resorts rivers with fresh water there's even a city called sirnagi it's called the city of love a beautiful place to visit as couples. You can spend the day either taking apart making wine or watching people make wine. And they teach you the traditional way Georgians make wine. And they let you taste the different types of wine they create. I haven't been, but I'm planning to go. One of the reasons Sirnaki is called the city of love is because when you marry over there, it's permanent and for a lifetime. And you can't go back there for a divorce, so you better think twice. 
A tour to a single destination can cost anywhere from like $25 to $150, depending how many people you are, how far it is you're going, how many places you're going to. There are also packages like day tours and 10 day excursions where you go almost everywhere and they can start from $150 up to $1,000, maybe even more. I believe this includes food and activities, so you pay once and you never have to touch your pocket again. So now, some people's prices are overpriced, or a bit more than others, and that's either because they are ripping you off, or they're really good tour guides, busy ones too. If you're in a group and you have a Georgian friend, it's not going to cost you anywhere near those, uh, those amounts, because you can rent a car with friends, drive everywhere, but it's a different adventure when you have a tour guide, because they'll entertain you with all the legends, the facts, the fictions, the storytelling, and history, and a good tour guide, for me, must speak perfect English, have a good sense of humor, be a safe driver, have a safe car, and the ones that rip you off literally speak no English, you'll have trouble explaining things to him and more work is needed from you using a translator all the time, car might break down, it's just not worth the money. Even if they're not ripping you off and it's cheap, just don't do that. What are my expenses if I was to live here? Living expenses are quite affordable here, while expenses are different for everyone. You could live a good life here with about $250 to $500 for rent, Another $150 to $200 for groceries per month. I came here from Dubai, a city that's so expensive. So for me, this place is really affordable and I went all out. I have a gym membership in world class, the best gym in town. Membership costs uh, $55 a month. There is good gyms around and the prices start from $30 a month. They're very good gyms. And on top of that, I have a personal trainer who trains me 12 times a month and I pay him $180 a month. Back in Dubai, a trainer would cost me $1,000 to $1,500 a month minimum. My body is not the only thing I work out. I also see a psychologist every two weeks. I pay her $15 a session, which is normally an hour, and I, she's amazing. All right, I'm, I'm back in Dubai, I can't even afford it because a session costs $300 minimum. When I first came here, I was doing yoga twice a week in Radisson Blue. I paid $60 for eight lessons, and that was incredible. A secretary for my business costs $300 a month. Let's talk about utilities. So the internet costs $9 a month for 20 MB and $10 a month for 40 MB. All right, my service provider is MACT. You might want to write that down. It's also the best SIM card for your phone as it has network coverage in most places that tele providers don't, like when you're going through the tours in the mountains. Gas, electricity, and everything are like $30 to $60, depending on the flat in your apartment. And if it's winter, it goes a little bit more up. Would you recommend me to visit? Yes. It's a no-brainer, man. Back when I was younger, I had trouble leaving Dubai. I was so attached. When I finished school, all my friends left for different countries for uni, and I had the opportunity to do the same, but I couldn't just leave. I couldn't, I could go anywhere in the world. I didn't, and I couldn't. I was so attached to Dubai, right, the place I grew up. I was willing to continue living there even though all my friends had left, and I had to make new friends again. And I did. I joined uni, graduated, and still felt like I couldn't leave. Fast forward now, who would have thought that I'd be living in Georgia when I could be in America, Canada, anywhere in Europe? I chose here. Why? Because this place is underrated. Barely anyone even knows where Georgia is or that it even exists. Most people mistake it for that state, Georgia, right? In USA, and more and more people are discovering the beauty and the opportunities of this emerging country in Eastern Europe. And I believe Georgia is going to prosper like it already has been doing. It's gonna to continue to do so, and we're going to see Georgia be the next Singapore, the next Hong Kong, the next Dubai, in its own way, of course. All right, Georgia is not new. It's full of history, it's full of culture, as one of the oldest and most ancient languages. And they were able to keep that till now. The population is rising, the number of tourism is rising year by year. We reached two million tourists before Corona happened, and you would think that when a pandemic happens, the entire place will go crazy, go out with guns and rob shops, and that's what I was thinking is gonna happen. <laughs> Heck, people in America started loading up guns, and we thought the banks would collapse and the government would fall in and fail to protect our citizens, but you'd be shocked how well Georgia did in fact. They were one of the first countries in the world to flatten the curve. And that made people even more aware of Georgia and how safe it is. Right, they did literally every precaution from masks to stickers in public areas to sanitizers everywhere, different sets of curfews and different variations of lockdowns. 
they did really well. I mean, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world during Corona. Not only did we have a low number of cases every day, we also lived quite affordable. And in return, I got to save so much more and keep that money for investments and my online activities. Hey, look, I could go on and on and on. For the real estate side of things, I've already created a couple videos on Tbilisi and why it's a great place to invest in real estate. So you might want to check that out afterwards, but for life, for living, this place has won my heart. Oh, I'd like to add that although I'm not here for tax reasons, I know many, many people that are and many that are on their way here to pay less tax, either by staying out of their country for 180 days a year, by living here, or if you are a high net worth individual with either around $800,000 in investments or $60,000 in income, I can help you apply for HNWI tax residency status where your foreign income arriving in Georgia only gets taxed 1%. 1%. If you'd like to know what that's like and how much it costs to get that done for you, please find a way to contact me through one of the links below. The easiest is by direct messaging me on Instagram. But if you'd like to be more formal, of course, you can contact me through email. My company's contact form on sterling.ge will do just that. So guys, we're nearly at the end of the video. These are the most frequent questions, the FAQs I get asked on Tbilisi, Georgia. I hope this helps. I know this wasn't so much about real estate. If you'd like to know more about real estate investing in Tbilisi, I'll put two videos up at the end of this video. Go straight to that. Thank you for your time. Again, I hope this was valuable for you. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button to not miss out on any future videos. Until next time, Sana Sanani.